How's it going, everyone? So I wanted to kind of walk you through how you should properly clean up a use effect if you are doing some type of network request inside of that use effect for when the component mounts. You need to make sure that you always return a cleanup function. And if you're using something like fetch, typically you, uh, what I've seen is a lot of people don't actually clean up that API request. But when it comes to like doing error handling and you have any additional things that need to happen when the response comes back, you need to make sure that you actually, what we call abort the original connection. So I got a little example here where I have a tab component and this tab component has two panels, right? We have another panel. And if I click on to do's, it does a network request to a to do's endpoint. And after about a second, I have a, a, a fake delay set up. It's going to return some to-do list information and we display that to the page. So that all works great, but I wanna show you something that might be kind of interesting that even though I quickly, if I go to other and then quickly click to do's and go back, this code is still resolving, right? There's still a promise that's running in the background. And even though I've unmounted and cleaned up that to do's panel, the promise chain for the original request is going to still run. So let's just kind of go ahead and look through that and I'll show you a little approach you can use to kind of make this more error resistant. So notice here we have a to-dos component and when we mount this component, we basically fetch the to-dos information. And when we get the to-dos back, we either check if the response is okay, meaning like status code of 200 or 2XX. And if everything seems fine, we take the to-dos that come back from the request and we put them in state and then we map over those and render them out. Hopefully this is all kind of like pretty basic to understand. But if for some reason something went wrong with the backend, we set an error at a higher place because I want to show a modal. And in this example, I'm using uh, Jodi. And we basically take that string and we put it in this error atom. And that's going to be used for displaying an error alert over here. By the way, I think I'm using uh, Maintine or what's it called? Mantine for uh, the, the styling. I just wanted something basic that can kind of show you some tabs and stuff. But let's kind of go to the API and look what's going on. So I have a to do's API handler, and this is an XJS. And all it does is it basically just has a timeout of one second. And when that timeout finishes, it's going to return the to do's information. So let's say for whatever reason, our API was down, the server's broken, I can't get a request to to the backend. So let's just change this to a status code of 500 just to kind of simulate that the, you know, the request can't go through, the server's down, it's crashing for some reason. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this to do's tab and notice about after a second, we show an alert. So off the bat, like if you're not really testing your application, everything seems fine, like this is great, but if I were to quickly click to do's and then quickly click other again, notice that the alert still shows up. And it this might actually say something more specific to like to do's, right? Instead of saying our servers are down, try again later. What if this says your to do's could not be fetched? Okay, I'll make this a more specific error related to to do's. And now when the user is on the other tab, it still shows this strange error that was related to the other components mount lifecycle. So now the users are sitting here like, okay, why did this show up? Like, I don't understand. Was this for the other tab? Was this for, maybe you have a bunch of different other tabs and you don't know when this thing happened. So a, a quote unquote proper way or a better way to basically handle this is you can create something called an abort controller like this. And from the abort controller, this is, I believe, built into the browser. You can take a signal from the abort controller and put it into your fetch request here. So I'm going to go ahead and just pass signal. So what this abort controller allows you to do is when the effect cleans up, remember your effects, you should always return some type of cleanup function. And the cleanup in this example is we should kind of cancel the get request so that none of this code is going to run, right? If you cancel the request and the callback, is not going to be invoked. The, the promise chain is going to stop and it's going to actually probably throw an exception. If I were to put a catch here and just go ahead and say like console log error, I just want to kind of show you this real quick. But now I'm basically saying when this component unmounts, which the unmount happens when I quickly click and go away, it's going to no longer show that alert because we're not even on the panel that's like related to the to do's endpoint failing. Now if I go to the console, you'll notice that we got an error here that says DOM um, exception, the user aborted a request. So just wanted to show you that there is still some things going on with the promise chain. The catch is going to actually um, throw an error and you can do something with that if you wanted to. 
So in our case, you probably want to like suppress the specific exception. Like if it is a DOM, DOM exception, the user aborted the request, then maybe you don't want to log anything, just, you know, kind of suppress it. Um, maybe there's a use case for you actually want to do something with an aborted request. But the, the main thing I'm trying to show here is that now that we've aborted the request, we don't get that weird, weird alert to pop up at the top of the screen, which can kind of throw off the user and make their user experience very confusing. Now we just only worry about the stuff that's related to this component. Now there's other ways that you can do this. You don't have to use a, an abort controller. Um, technically in the effect, you could say like is mounted is equal to true. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you another way. It's really up to you how you want to do it. I think the abort controller is probably the, the proper way. But whenever the cleanup function is called, I'm gonna set this boolean to false and i'm going to go ahead and only set the error if mounted is true you could also put it here i could say like if not mounted then i'm just going to go ahead and say like return or something this is a, i feels like a little bit hackier um but this is a another way that you can potentially do it so again let's just go ahead and click to do's and go back so in this example the request is no longer aborted like the request just comes through 500 error um but the main takeaway is that we don't actually do anything with the response when it comes back. We basically just say do nothing, do a no op, and nothing is really done to really affect the user's experience. So this is another approach. Leave a comment if you have a preferred approach. I know a lot of people like using the abort controller, so maybe that's probably the best way to do it. But I've seen a lot of code that has like fetching happening inside the use effects, and they don't have a cleanup function, right? So you should probably always clean up your stuff because you don't want these promises resolving five seconds later and then all of a sudden your UI just like randomly breaks because you didn't clean up a, a pending request that should have been cleaned up a long time ago that you're not really even using anymore. But if you're using something like React Query, like you probably don't even have to worry about some of those stuff because it probably handles all of that for you out of the box. But anyway, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel if you want to talk to me directly or try to get help from other people who uh, you know, are learning how to code as well. It's a good community of people willing to help you out if you're stuck with a React question or JavaScript question, etc. So be sure to check out my description and click on my Discord and go ahead and join. Anyway, have a good day. Happy coding.